Welcome back to the 6-5 on the road, but we're not actually on the road, but we are Daniels coming back from VMware Explorer 2025 in Las Vegas. Unfortunately, I could not make it. Daniel, you were there, but I was watching from afar. I missed you there, but if you watch the video that we did with Hawk Terran while we were there, I, I virtually introduced you stage left as if you were there. Because to me, uh, like, it's just not the same without you, buddy. That's really, really kind. I appreciate that. Yeah, I did watch uh, part of the video. Did really get pulled in, though. And it really seemed like uh, the biggest thing for this keynote, and I, Matt and I did write an article about this, was uh, VCF 90 and, and the details behind it, the execution of it, um, the all-in nature of it, uh, rolling out a bunch of customer metrics, right? How many have adopted what they're using? And then they they, they went deep uh, as well. Yeah, absolutely. If you want that high level, check out this sit down I, I did with Hawk Tan. If you want to go deep, we had Paul Turner, who was the other key, keynoter at the event, went much deeper across the platform. But yeah, Pat, I mean, what I, at the highest level, Hawk Tan doubled down on what he said a year ago after the acquisition was made. And he said, you know, private cloud is alive and well, and that basically workloads are going to go from the public cloud back to the private cloud. But what was required was something like VCF9 to make that more plausible, because what really is needed by IT, besides that sort of more gradual process of upgrading, right, that no rip and replace, they, they needed the platform to have all the bells and whistles that you get when you move to a public cloud. And so it took some work. It took some effort. And I mean, they skipped four generations ahead from what, 5.2 to 9.0. I'm kidding. Yeah. You have to understand the VMware numbering to understand that this 9.0. But having, having said that, Pat, they came out and they had a lot of action packed. You love the word payload, a lot of payload inside of VCF 9. And I think Hawk was doing a bit of a victory lap because the business has held up. The long tail is sticking around. They're sticking around with virtualization and other products, even as prices have gone up, even as, you know, some of the things that, you know, there's all the FUD kind of, oh, everyone's leaving. Some are, but you know what? That was actually the plan all along. And actually more of the long tail is sticking with it. And VCF9 is really designed to be in place upgrades, meaning eventually when these companies get around to it, they can upgrade. Yeah, Dan, if I look back, you know, it's so funny. Uh, I always like to do the victory lap on it. I was talking about private cloud 10 years ago, right? And never happened. And big challenges there, like you actually have to have an entire stack of software that works, right? It's not just, hey, I'm delivering up, uh, uh, you know, virtualized workloads or containerized workloads. Uh, you have to integrate with security. Uh, networking is uh, is involved in OpenStack really had had none of that which is which is why uh, it didn't it didn't take off and vcf isn't new right we're on the fourth or fifth version the ninth version uh i don't i don't know but um it it i would say you can finally put up an aws stack and vcf9 and and have a kind of a like a like for like uh, and, and it's ga so dan we're four minutes in and we haven't even talked about ai uh, did you talk at all uh, with a uh, hawk about uh, about AI? Yeah, we talked about everything. We had the the long off camera, which I can't tell any of you about what we said, and then we had the on camera, which of course I hope you all all have a chance to watch. But yes, AI was very much front and center. A year ago, it was it was, it was VMware private AI, and this year there was a, another real adder there. They've got the NVIDIA private AI. They more recently announced the Intel Gaudi private AI. Right. And then this year they came out with the AMD. So now they've gone all the way. And then of course, when it comes to, you know, uh, partnerships, they also added their canonical Ubuntu, which is the OS for cloud. And that partnership is just deepening how user friendly. I mean, here's the thing, Pat, like VMware is really IT friendly. When I was trying to push through the room, I looked around and I said, look, this is a room full of absolute IT geeks. These people love the build out of this infrastructure, but they're bringing it all together here and they're making AI possible because to make AI possible, Pat, they need to not only bring home the CPU and GPU side of things, 
They also need to bring together the IT and the developer side of things. Because in this era, yeah. even more so than in the CPU era, the developers rule the roost. And the idea that you have to have your infrastructure for developers off somewhere else, and you can't be doing any sort of sandbox, you can't be doing any sort of real-time development on your production systems, isn't gonna work well when you're trying to move as fast as AI moves. So they're building it for, you know, AI images, container runtime, schedule tools, so you can deploy models you know, more rapidly and do it all securely and you can bring dev developers, DevOps, and IT closer together. Yeah, it's so funny. Uh, we're talking about this like this is something new, but the entire AWS was formed based on you know, yeah. a developer who wanted to just swipe their credit card uh, to be able to get access to server storage, networking, and, and security. And you, know, you just couldn't do that. You know, it used to take uh, three months to get compute, you know, six months to get storage, and about nine months to to spin up, uh, spin up uh, uh, networking, and then you know the security was whatever, whatever the company had. So yeah, it's like we're finally uh, here, here, Daniel. You know, on the private A, I want to go back to that a little. One, one yeah. piece that that I thought was a huge deal is that's bundling in private AI is a free add-on. Uh, for uh, for everybody. And I think strategically, VMware knows how important that is. And they want to get trial. They want to remove every objection uh, to get there. And not only are they are they giving funds to customers as a percentage of, of revenue to get them into VCF, uh, they're now putting private AI in there. Because, you know, if you're going to put the effort into uh, private AI, you're probably going to be that you're, you're going to be a VMware customer for a very long uh, time and you're not just going to um, uh, uh, rip in, uh, rip and replace here. So, you know, Dan, with our AI talk track, right, ultimately, invariably, we get into this uh, conversation of, of security. And uh, I did see a stepping up of the security posture here. Uh, and whether it's, um, you know, built in micro segmentation, identity based access controls, encryption in motion and at rest. Uh, it's funny, every, every time it, it looks like, oh, something seems to be very secure and then people are adding new features of it. And then you're like, was it secure from the beginning or is this because these threats uh, are, are, are changing? That, that's something I need to uh, do, do a little bit uh, uh, homework on. Obviously, AI is a amazing creator. It's a, it drives tons of opportunities for efficiency. It's a productivity workhorse. But anything that works that well becomes a, a black hat's best friend, right? I mean, can you imagine the? I think I saw you on X complaining about all the the nonsense uh, calls and and spam. And of course, I, you know, I go through my emails now, and I'm always just blown yeah. away by how good some of these phishing attempts are. Yeah, um, and you know, this isn't the exact security as it relates to necessarily controlling and, and securing your, your 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 VMs or your data center, but it's that same sort of motion in terms of how aggressive these black hats will be able to be. So yeah. it's up to the vendors, the hyperscalers, the software providers, um, your company like VMware, it's up to them to, of course, try to build the best in class security offerings and really build with security in mind. So you kind of put those three things together. We talked about IT plus developers. It's really IT plus developer plus security, because that is the optimal enterprise stack right now is that it's able to address all those things. And of course, work in a way that's going to be complementary and favorable for AI and AI development. Because realistically, Pat, and here's the thing, right? We had that study come out about MIT that 95% of AI doesn't work. Didn't that end up to be people, nonsense? I hope people, <laughs> you know, that's my favorite word. Um, I hope people read it because I think really what it is, is it's the human condition is actually persisting through AI. It's been in every transformation, right? Remember digital transformation, Pat? You make fun of it, analog transformation, you jokingly. It's like, because what did we do? We're like, oh, this is how we write the order on paper. Can we... Yes. We create a digital version of this and have little boxes you can fill in with, with your keyboard. I mean, with AI, we have the same problem. The There's a lack of intellectual curiosity in some companies. There's certainly fear of the implementation and deployment. This is slowing things down a little bit. And so, you know, so as enterprises do ramp up, though, they need to ramp up their AI, but they also need to ramp up and secure. They need to be compliant. They need to be governed. They need to do all those things well, Pat. But of course, Putting it all together is tough. And, and with VCF9, you know, 
in-house that you mentioned, micro-segmentation, you mentioned identity-based controls, and they now offer that advanced cyber compliance, which is that real-time monitoring, you know, a bit of an observability engine right inside of VMware. Yeah, so as, as we uh, bring this to a close here, Daniel, you know, uh, a few stories, right, that came out that people were uh, talking to me about was that um, they felt like it was a very different uh, explore this year, right? 2024 was kind of like saying goodbye to a friend. And then 2025 was like, a, okay, we, we've got the team, like we've got the, the customers that, that we want. We have the channel partners that we want. Uh, and everybody is on, everybody is, is on, is on board in this, this, oh, woe is me. And, you know, I know that 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 sounds awful, but but the oh my gosh, they raised prices on me, and 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 there's still customers who are kind of you know signed up for the three year tour and and, and might be you know putting in a, a partial plan B, but for the most part, uh, the vibe seemed uh, very positive and 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 future forward. I don't know if you felt that when you were on the ground there, Daniel. Yeah, there was plenty of energy. I mean, I was in the halls, I was walking, I was listening. There was enthusiasm. There was excitement. There was a couple cheers uh, when Paul Turner was presenting. You know, oh, wow. the stuff. The you know, he brought up Ubuntu. They got there was some excitement in the room. Um, you know, when they, you know, were talking about some of the customers, and they did a nice job too, Pat, because they had that nine out of ten number that I think it's nine out of ten of the ten largest Fortune companies are on VMware. Pretty yeah. nice stat. But we all knew that. We all knew that the biggest customers were going to stay on. But the whole question with Hawk's strategy was how does that sort of potentially push out some of the smaller, the longer tail and showing that some small customers that get it, that are modernizing are sticking with it and investing in VCF9. And again, it's not going to be all VCF9 and all private. They're very aware and they're acknowledging the fact that it's going to be hybrid multi, which is your favorite thing. You called it early. I'll give it to you. I wasn't even in the business when you were calling this stuff. I mean, that's how long ago it was. Um, you're my favorite. Oh. You're my favorite boomer, by the way. He's not a boomer. It doesn't matter, though. I'll never stop saying it. But it was a good event. There was a, there was a lot of good energy there. It was great to have sit downs with a number of their executives. And of course, uh, people should definitely check out your Forbes column as well, because you dug into some of the depths of, of the announcements there as well. Well, Daniel, uh, yeah. thank you for bringing me VMware Explorer 2025. Yeah, I'm right. here for you. I'm here for you, yeah. buddy. And listen, I just want to thank everybody for uh, tuning in here. Check out all the content like Daniel talked about. Hit all of the 6.5 content with VMware and all the private cloud content uh, out there. Hit that subscribe button and tune into our weekly show that airs at about, I think, 9 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Central on Monday morning. It needs to be your filler, what to get excited about uh, before you hit that tech week. Take care and bye-bye. 